हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून वी आर वी आर वी आर स्टार्टेड विद बैंकिंग चैप्टर वी विल कंटिन्यू विद बैंकिंग चैप्टर वी कंप्लीटेड वी हैव कंप्लीटेड अ लॉट ऑफ चैप्टर्स बिफोर वी हैव कंप्लीटेड मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी फिजिकल पॉलिसी टैक्सेशन वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द बेसिक्स बेसिक चैप्टर एज वेल इन मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी वी सॉ लॉट ऑफ हिस्ट्री अबाउट आर बी आई वी सॉ लॉट ऑफ टूल्स विच आर बी आई यूजेज सच एज लिक्विडिटी एडजस्टमेंट फैसिलिटी मार्जिन स्टैंडिंग फैसिलिटी लॉन्ग टर्म रेपो ऑपरेशन रेपो ऑपरेशन एक्सेट्रा we also saw inflation chapter inflation chapter we saw what is the what is inflation what is disinflation what is deflation we also saw the difference between different types of inflation we saw various causes of inflation cost push uh, demand pull inflation and the most or the most rampant one which is the uh, structural inflation right then we also saw various kinds of uh, ways to reduce inflation we saw that fiscal policy and monetary policy have to go in hand in hand we also saw what is a negative interest rate policy regime we also saw what is liquidity trap we also saw what is quantitative easing i hope these words resonate with you or i hope these words help you revise all these things quantitative easing is when rbi takes unconventional methods unconventional methods to increase the money supply unconventional methods to uh, boost the economy unconventional methods to follow an expansionary monetary policy unconventional methods to follow a cheap monetary policy right then we uh, we started with uh, banking chapter we we did some things we started uh, with the history not history we started with the types of banking can you can you recollect what were the types of banking can you recollect just try to recollect the first was commercial banks right commercial banks mein there were various types domestic uh, foreign private public differentiated bank regional rural banks theek hai then there were cooperative banks cooperative banks mein we had two principal categories urban and rural rural normally follow a three structure category urban also but in some places yes in some places they do not so no need to go in depth into that so in urban you uh, urban uh, cooperative sorry rural cooperative banks you have three structures one is state one is dccb district central cooperative bank and the other one is pacs primary agricultural credit society right then we saw land development banks land development banks are also called as state cooperative agriculture rural development banks sca rdbs right they are also land development banks um, then we saw investment banks or merchant banks what are investment banks or merchant banks try to recollect investment banks are banks which deal mainly in investing activities which deal mainly in buying and selling of investments which which look for profit making for their clients as well as for themselves and bear in mind their clients are not only individuals but also people like uh or also corporations big corporations big mncs theek okay? hai merchant banks are banks which help a company with an ipo process with the initial public offer ipo process uh with uh, uh with arranging the money and you know making all the arrangements for the money which is received when ipo happens initial public new issue happens then we have uh, banks like merchant banks then we also saw we also saw development banks Oh, well, last was the development banks. What are development banks? We spoke in detail about them. Development banks are also known as refinance institutions. Now, why they are called as refinance institutions? Because they don't give finance to them. Uh, they go, they don't give finance to uh, individuals or they don't give finance to end users like us. What they do is they give finance to financiers, which is normally cooperative banks, commercial banks, etc. So they refinance themselves. What are the examples of uh, development banks? What are the examples of refinance institutions? uh then uh the examples are should be the examples are nabard the examples are nhb national housing bank and so on mudra is also one of the examples and so on and so forth right then we also saw what are non banking financial companies nbfcs they are companies they are registered under companies act they are registered they have a certificate of registration under rbi act but they need not necessarily fall under regulation of rbi some fall under regulation of rbi some fall under regulation of sebi some fall under regulation of national housing bank for example housing finance companies nbfcs housing finance companies they fall under the regulation of national housing banks and not rbi or sebi uh, rbi or sebi directly right these were the overall banking structures then we also saw that schedule sorry commercial banks or cooperative banks can be of two types one scheduled one non scheduled so there can be a non scheduled commercial bank there can be scheduled commercial bank there can be non scheduled cooperative bank there can be scheduled cooperative banks 99.9% of the banks are scheduled commercial or scheduled cooperative banks there are a few banks uh, like local area banks which are not scheduled so what do you mean by scheduled is they are listed in the second schedule of rbi which means they have to follow the requirements set up by rbi they have to follow the uh, uh, what we say they have to follow the rules and regulations set by rbi 
and the others are also under the control of RBI but need not be directly. So, RBI has lesser powers with respect to them as well as they have lesser privileges and facilities with respect to RBI. For example, they can't access LAF window, they can't, act, they can't borrow funds from RBI and so on and so forth. Right? We also saw NBFC ke different types. We also saw that the difference between banks and NBFCs, the first, the very, there were three differences which were listed on the RBI website we saw directly. The first and the, uh, the first difference was what? They cannot accept demand deposits, very, very, very important. Second difference is they do not form part of payment and settlement systems and can issue checks drawn on, and cannot issue checks drawn on itself, very important again. And third one was deposit insurance is not available to depositors of NBFCs, unlike banks. Okay, in banks, depositors can avail the facility of deposit insurance, but in NBFCs, they simply cannot. Now, what is deposit insurance? I told you, if your bank, uh, if your bank goes bankrupt or, you know, it, it, it cannot repay your money or if it fails in its business, uh, remember banking is also business only, then what happens is that statutorily, statutorily government gives you an insurance up to rupees 5, uh, 5 lakh rupees per depositor, right? So, if your balance in the account is less than 5 lakh, then obviously your entire amount is covered. So, 3 lakhs, so you will get 3 lakhs. But if it is more than 5 lakhs, then up to 5 lakhs insurance is there. And uske above, above uh, more and above that 5 lakh rupees, you don't get insurance. But if the bank tomorrow performs well, if the bank is able to recover the money, then you will be able to get your money back. Otherwise, there will be a few issues, there will be a few problems with your money. Hai? Now, we move on to the very, very, very important part of banking. And I want all of your attention here, whatever I am going to teach you here. Okay. Uh, it is very, very, very important. I am going to tell you all about non-performing assets. I am going to tell you about NPAs. So, once we understand what are NPAs, once we understand what is being done to, um, uh, to uh, reduce the problem of NPAs, what is being done to uh, deal with NPAs, then you fully appreciate the problem ki why it is a big and grave problem for our economy and for every economy in general. Hai? So, first we need to understand how a bank's balance sheet looks like, right? We need to understand how, uh, how, uh, what are the accounts, what are the assets, what are the liabilities, what are the different types of accounts which the bank will uh, show in its balance sheet. So, very, very slowly we will go. It is very simple to understand, but once you understand this, other things become very easy to understand. Right. So, I will make two accounts here, very important. See, accounting, this is called, this is very easy. You write some things here, you write some things here. For example, you write revenue receipts here, you write uh, revenue expenditure here. Hai? So, these two are opposite nature of columns. So, if you write, if you are writing whatever money you are receiving, you are writing receipts here, you will write expenses here, simple. Hai? And this goes for, right. Now, let us call this, let us call this profit and loss account. It is very important you understand this so that you will be able to understand whatever we are going to talk. Let us call this profit and loss account. Okay? We will write all our expenses here. Okay. So far so good. So far understood. And we will write all our incomes here. Okay. Chalo. Very good. Next here we will call this as balance sheet. Now, why balance sheet and why not? No need to get into that. That is core accounting. But I hope you know two terms by now. I hope you know these terms, expenses and incomes. Whatever is your kharcha is your expense. Whatever is your income is your income. Simple, as simple as that. Expenses and incomes. And balance sheet, I would, I, these two terms also, I hope you know these two terms. I would write it as liability. I hope you know what is liability. Anything which which casts a burden on you is a liability. Anything which, which gives you a right to recover money or to recover benefit out of it for a long period of time is called as an asset, right? Profit and loss account, expenses, income, balance sheet, liabilities and assets. Chalo. Very good, very simple. Yes, understood very well, right? Then, now you, you have to tell me, you have to tell me what would appear in banks' liabilities. We have discussed a few things, yes or no? What would appear in banks' liabilities? Very slowly we are going. We are, we are, uh, we'll come back to this screen again and again uh, once we go ahead also. So, we know one thing which is there in banks' balance sheet and we know one thing which is banks' liability. We have spoken about it. So, what is, so now think from a bank's angle, think from a commercial bank's angle. What is it that gives you a, a burden? 
you are a bank what is it that gives you a burden you get burden when you accept deposits yes or no so deposit savings account current account fixed deposit recurring deposit depending uh, no matter what type this is called deposits right so deposits i will write it as in my liability so if 100 rupees are my deposit i would write it as here yes or no we have discussed this so when you keep deposits with bank bank incurs a burden of protecting it bank incurs a burden of giving you interest on it theek hai and bank incurs a burden of uh, repaying it to you whenever you need it whenever you want to withdraw bank has to give it to you theek hai so these are called as deposits now on deposits what happens do banks give interest or banks charge interest what do you think on deposits banks give interest or banks charge interest what do you think what is your opinion on the matter i hope by now you know that on deposits banks give interest to us so we are now bank so banks will give interest to us theek hai so now when banks give interest i want you to tell me will bank write that interest on deposits here or here you tell me interest on deposits banks will write here or here think and tell think and tell what do you think interest on deposits banks will write here or here this side or this side banks will write interest on deposits here or here so banks will write interest on deposits in expenses i hope by now it is very clear interest on deposits is banks expense because it is paying it chalo very good so far so good theek hai then what we do is we come to the asset side what are, what what are banks assets what are banks assets banks assets are loans and advances can i call them loans and advances see loans is a very crude term loans and advances is the proper term which is called uh, uh, which is uh, you know uh, which is mentioned in the balance sheet so loans and advances i would write it as my assets i hope by now it is very clear loans and assets which are given out by banks and this is the main main business of the banks yes or no loans and advances giving loans and advances is the main business of the bank right so loans and advances i would write at my asset side and then what do you think banks earn interest on loans or banks give interest on loans banks earn interest on loans right banks earn interest so it is their income or is it their expense it is their income so i would write it as here interest on loans and advances theek hai chalo very good next next what happens so now we have established that bank will write loans and advances on the asset side banks will write deposits on the liability side deposits pe whatever interest bank is giving to us it is the expense of banks so i will write interest on deposits as expenses and whatever income bank is earning on loans and advances it will write it as here interest on loans and advances theek hai so far if you have understood this that means you have understood a lot of things so now i would write i would like to introduce two more terms here so what do you think bank if it if it has surplus money what do you think it will give out as loans right can banks also keep uh, keep its deposits with some other bank have we seen like this yes we have seen in case of net demand and time liabilities where bank also see, uh, keep some money with banks theek okay? hai so those deposits with other banks so if canara bank is keeping a deposit with state bank of india or if axis bank is keeping a deposit with state bank of india where do you think those deposits will come will it be a liability or will it be an asset axis bank is keeping its deposits with state bank of india where do you think it will come it will come here or it will come here it will come under asset side yes or no because that is its money which it is keeping with other bank it is liability for that other bank because wo it will keep it will write it as here deposits but it will keep the uh, axis bank if it is keeping money with sbi it will write it as assets yes or no very good next we also saw that in slr you have to invest in government bonds remember in slr statutory liquidity ratio you have to invest in government bonds where do you think investment in government bonds would come would it come here or would it come here would it be an asset or a liability for the bank think and tell apply the concept of asset and liability and then tell me would it be an asset or would it be a liability investment in government bonds investment in government bonds who is borrowing money government is borrowing money who is lending money bank is lending money where are we writing loans asset side so can i say it will come in asset side yes or no concept should be very 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 clear otherwise this is very difficult to comprehend theek hai 
so when i write assets uh, so when i when bank axis bank hdfc bank when they are maintaining slr or when they are investing in government bonds where will they write that amount will they write liability side or asset side see when when they are investing in government bonds government is giving them bonds and government is saying ki i will give you interest you are bank i will give you interest you are giving me money which means for bank it is nothing but another loans and advances here it is given to the government yes or no the interest on these loans and advances would be written in income yes or no because government will give periodic interest which banks will write here theek hai so can i say government bonds would appear here are you sure about it or it will appear here you need to understand is government bond creating a burden on any bank is government bonds creating any outflow for any bank any burden any uh, any uh, monetary outflow do banks have to give interest on government bonds or banks get interest on government bonds banks get interest on government bonds so is it not any other kind of loans and advances for the banks no or can i write it as here is it deposit for the bank use your concepts they are very simple concepts what do you think can i write investment in government bonds here in assets or should i write investment in government bonds here in liabilities what do you think it, it will come in asset you are just giving when when i write investment in government bonds see investment in government bonds is nothing but a fancy name for loans and advances to the government yes or no so i will write investment in government bonds here do you remember banks also invest in gold can i write gold also as my asset because gold is also an asset because it is my possession it will give me future economic benefits theek hai can i write cash also here because cash is also my asset after all cash i can use it any time if i am keeping deposits as deposit in other banks as my asset then i would write cash also as my asset now if form is changed do you agree cash will come here or is cash a liability do we have to pay cash to someone we don't theek hai then what else can what else can i write investment in corporate bonds also here if a bank is purchasing a uh, a bond issued by reliance india limited which means reliance is borrowing from the bank which means it is a loan and advance given by the bank to reliance so i can write investment in corporate bonds also here theek hai let's say bank is having 10 more investments so all investments should come here do you agree with this do you agree with this that all investments should come here theek hai what about all liabilities see all whatever you are investing is your asset always remember you buy gold from that you invest in shares what happens if banks invest in shares where would it come liability or an asset what happens with bank when banks invest in shares banks are buying shares they are expected to return some money or you know gain some return from it so we will write it as asset side now what about liabilities apart from deposits what do you think are the other liabilities can you think of anything that that causes a burden on banks that causes uh, banks to uh, that banks have to repay them so can i write loan taken banks also take loan from others okay see deposit is nothing but loan taken only when you are keeping your salary account with the bank you are giving your money to the bank to use remember we saw okay out of 110 rupees it will keep aside and 90 rupees it will give out as loans right i hope you remember all this okay acha when you start a business when you start your own business this is very important huh? see all this is i am i am explaining all this because this is not because i am going too deep in the subject this is asked by upsc that is why i am explaining all of this okay this all is asked by upsc and once you understand this you can tackle any question when it uh, when it comes from this area be it prelims or be it mains or interview right so loans and advances investment in government bonds gold corporate bonds cash everything is done fair and very good now i am asking what about liability side of a bank's balance sheet what do you think so whenever see uh, this concept i will have to teach you whenever you start a business you as the owner are different from your business your business is like a separate entity so it is like you having a pet your pet is different it is breathing it is living you are also different see you control it you have let's say you have purchased it not adopted it but purchased it you are also investing in the business you are feeding him you are taking care of it you are bathing him similarly business is also your pet but it is different from you yes or no because it is it has its life of its own so when you so when you personally now answer me when you personally 
when you personally invest 100 rupees in a business is it your personal asset or your personal liability whenever i tell the word investment it should be an asset theek hai you are investing because you are expected to get profits from the business yes or no what do you think business angle would be now go in the minds of the business if your owner is investing 100 rupees in you what do you think it is is it your liability or is it your asset it is your liability because it is your job as a business to earn profit on that money and give the money entirely back to the owner yes or no it is very simple in accounting terms in normal commerce or economics terms we call it as capital now this capital is very important for us for our understanding of banks so when banks owners let's say hdfc banks promoters uh, promoter is deepak parekh so when they started hdfc bank they would have invested some money theek hai so bank would have written liability here yes or no so it will write capital of mr deepak parekh because bank has to earn profits and profits has to be returned to the owner yes or no over a period of 1 year or over a period of 100 years that doesn't matter sometimes profits happen after 100 years so when reliance was started by dhirubhai ambani he would have invested some money in his business that business that reliance business would have returned capital invested by mr ambani on the liability side yes or no because his pay profit has to be earned and given back to the owner i am business now i am a pet i have to make my owner happy so whatever he is giving me is my liability yes or no see understand the concept of asset and liability very clearly asset is something which is expected to give you benefits over a period of time liability is something which you have to give to someone over a period of time simple example when you take loan from someone when you take loan from someone you have to give interest yes or no you are you have taken loan you have you have to pay interest when you take loan from bank does bank give you interest or bank charges interest from you bank charges interest from you yes or no right so it is your burden you have to pay emi you have to pay interest monthly interest and also it is your burden so it is your liability think from bank's angle bank is giving loan to you which means it is investing in you yes or no which means it is lending to you which means it will get interest periodically it will get emi periodically so it is its asset similarly when i i am investing in my business it means nothing but i am giving a loan to my business okay so i will write it as my asset investment in business but when i think from the business angle business is point of view what he will think what business will think see trade business as a separate entity so if i go from business is point of view what he will think owner has invested 100 rupees in me it is my job to make profits on it it is my job to give the owner 100 rupees back with profits and all okay so i will write it as a liability yes or no so i can write it as investment in business by dhirubhai money or i can call it as capital right i also told you ki when you want more funds for your business when you want to raise more funds you can go for share issue i told you you can we can you know we can stand on the top of a building in orn and we can scream whoever wants to invest can invest remember i'd use these words whoever wants to invest so let's say dhirubhai ambani meets another friend theek hai he meets another friend who says ki i will also invest in reliance so he personally will write in his assets but what would reliance write capital so when i say capital is increasing what does that mean more and more investment is coming in when i say capital is decreasing what does that mean people are removing their investments or redeeming their investments theek hai now one simple question one simple question 100 rupees i have invested in the business there is no other person there is only me and business but tomorrow i see capital has increased to 105 why is that why is that profits because whatever business will earn wo bhi mera hi hai na it is my asset so i will write that profit as my asset individually but business will write that as a addition to capital yes or no so can business write it as plus profit yes whatever plus profit it will happen here if it happen if loss happens what will happen loss yahan likh denge minus tomorrow that 100 rupees if you gave it to someone and he spent it in gambling gaya na paisa similarly if loss happens in the business business is liability reduces why because owner had invested 100 rupees in me it was my liability to give him 100 rupees back plus profit but loss ho gaya so now i have to give him only 90 rupees back because 10 rupees to gone it is gone it is lost theek hai so i will write plus profit minus loss here do you agree with this today when i invest 100 rupees in the business it is business's responsibility to give me 100 rupees that is capital profit ho raha hai agar to who who has the right on the profit owner so who has the liability to give it back to the owner business so will business add profit to the capital whatever profit will happen business will keep on adding and whenever owner wants owner can take it away simple hai similarly if loss happen business would say loss ho gaya i i don't know anything loss happened it was due to bad decision making you only took decisions 
तो माय लायबिलिटी एज अ बिजनेस इज रिड्यूस बिकॉज उतना पैसा ही नहीं बचा अभी द रिमेनिंग मनी इज गॉन सो हंड्रेड रुपीज यू इन्वेस्टेड बट यू टूक सम बैड डिसीजन एंड लॉस हैपन ऑफ ट्वेल्व रुपीज सो यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट ओनली एटी एट रुपीज फ्रॉम द बिजनेस लॉस हो गया ना ट्वेल्व रुपीज गॉन राइट सो आई वुड रिड्यूस द लॉस फ्रॉम कैपिटल राइट इतना समझा गया दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट स्टेज वील आई विल कीप ऑन एडिंग लेयर्स टू दिस बट वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस ट्रस्ट मी एन पी एस प्रोडेंशियल नॉर्म्स कैपिटल बफर एवरी थिंग वुड बी वेरी क्लियर सो वी वॉन्ट टू इन्वेस्ट एज मच टाइम एज पॉसिबल वील स्टार्ट अगेन लेट से आई जस्ट क्विकली टेक यू थ्रू इट सो वी आर मेकिंग टू अकाउंट्स यर वन इज कॉल्ड प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट वन इज कॉल्ड बैलेंस शीट इन प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट वी रिकॉर्ड ऑन वन साइड ऑल आर एक्सपेंसिस वी आर बैंक वी आर कमर्शियल बैंक नॉट आर बी आई we are commercial bank we write all our expenses here we write all our incomes here we write all our capital uh, sorry liabilities here we write all our assets here so let us start one by one loans and advances given by the bank are they assets or liabilities they are assets why because banks give out loans it is their principal business and they get money out of it they get interest out of it they get emi monthly emi it is their main business yes or no so banks will write it in loans and advances in the asset side now on this loan they also earn interest do they earn or they don't earn they earn interest so would they write it as expense or income income so interest on loans and advances i have written it here see bear in mind this is the principal amount so 10 lakh rupees loan given will come here uske upar 5% interest every year would come here theek hai now why are we separating this no need to get into that just just assume ki we have separated it theek hai the main principal i can say summary reason i can give you is this goes on for many years but this happens every year interest you will get every year every month so 12 months ka interest you will write here but this 10 lakhs will go on theek hai now let us say he is repaying you 1 lakh every year so ye kam hota jayega 9 lakhs 8 lakhs 7 lakhs whatever is your remaining asset theek hai chal next uh next we spoke we spoke about this so when i said ki when a government sorry when a commercial bank is investing in government bonds what does it doing it is lending or borrowing from the government it is lending to the government i told you government will give a paper that bank will take ki ha after 10 years i will get my money back now on that money who is the borrower government government now government where will government write that money in its books of accounts liability or asset liability so because he has to pay government has to pay money to bank so i will write i as a bank will write investment in government bonds gold corporate bonds cash everything i will write it as my asset because i can use it any time because i can get the benefit out of it any time in the future yes or no theek hai what do you think investment in government bonds pe interest jo aayega the interest which will come where will we write that interest interest on income income interest on loans and advances so i would write interest here also interest on let's say investments hai na i would broadly classify them as investments right so when we are investing in so can i say government is invest sorry bank is investing in government when it is paying when it is subscribing for government bond investment hi hai wo because bank expect something in return also now isme ka certain percentage is mandatory as per slr yes or no certain percentage we saw 18% over and above bank wants to give it can give barabar hai bank wants to voluntarily keep 25% in slr or in government bonds it can why not minimum 18% to aapko rakhna hi hai that is the criteria but what would happen if banks give out or banks keep more money here what would happen it will have less money to give here similarly understood yes or no what happens when crr crr is to be kept with rbi but it is the ownership lies with whom with the commercial bank so this is let's say crr cash today rbi raises the ratio what will happen this would reduce or this would increase this would increase rbi increases the ratio this would increase what would reduce this would reduce because you have only fixed funds remember loanable funds fixed hai theek hai and now can i ha so now coming to deposits can i say deposit is my liability because i have a liability to protect it i have a liability to pay interest on it so can i write the interest on deposits here because it is my expense which i have to give to my deposit holders i am a bank samjha so far very good so can i say this now tell me true or false this is a percentage of this try to recollect can i say this not corporate bonds not corporate bonds but rest everything else is a percentage of this remember net demand and time liabilities so when i say crr is 4% of nditl which means cash is 4% of this so as this increases this would also increase samjha so the more and more liabilities you take can i say the more and more risk bank is taking because liability hai burden hai 
so the more burden banks take more liquid cash or liquid assets it has to keep and less and less it can give to outsiders because this tomorrow if this fails then what, how would you service this hai na so this has to be significant as a fallback as a buffer because banks can any time sell government bonds and get the money and repay it to depositors samjha this is how banks function now what about capital so i told ki if you are investing in a pet let's say you buy a pet it's a very cute dog you will buy dog food you will buy uh, uska small plate for eating small shelter kennel and you will bathe it almost uh, every two days you will take him to walk so you are investing emotionally and physically and monetarily in the pet yes or no so when you are in a relationship or when you love your brother sister your mother uh, father you are investing in them because when you need them they have to be there indirectly yahi hota hai na when you need help someone is there friends ka kya example hota hai you help them when they need help and when you need help when you need emotional support they are there so it is nothing but you are investing it theek okay? hai but sometimes we feel guilty right ki are this person is doing so much for me this person is helping me so much so that becomes your liability ki next time he calls i will be there yes or no similarly when you invest in a business when you invest or when you open in a business what is personally what what is it uh, which side will it will you write asset or liability when you invest in a business it is your asset but think from business angle kya the owner is giving so much money to him me i have to repay at least the same amount plus something which i can gain profit theek hai to capital plus profit liability hoga business ka why liability because it has to be repaid back to the owner it is a burden to the business why minus loss because if loss happens then i don't have to repay them it is gone the money is gone right so when when uh, business people say ki are mera loss ho gaya which means they have reduced their asset or they have reduced their liability when business men say ki my loss so they have reduced their asset why because they have invested 100 rupees loss happened in the business now they are getting back only 90 rupees similarly if you keep if you keep your bank account with axis bank tomorrow axis bank shuts down your deposits go which means you say it is my loss yes or no so you will write down your asset but when axis bank shuts down it will write down its deposits because it does not have to repay it to you theek hai when axis bank fails it does not have to repay the deposit to you yes or no so it will write it as it will reduce the liability which means we are doing nothing but capital say we are reducing the liability minus loss itna samjha now this profit and loss where does it come from what is profit when when do you make profit personally when does a business make profit what do you think when your incomes are more than your expenses that is your profit when your expenses are more than income what happens loss so can i say this iska jo balance aayega if incomes are more than exp- uh, sorry if expenses are more than income then it will be your loss and if incomes are more than expenses then it will be a profit can i say ki this isse yaha jayega finally every year so at the end of every year this happens iska total hota hai total of all your expenses total of all your income whatever is the remaining figure be it positive be it negative it is if it is positive that means it is an income negative hai to loss hai and that is added back to the capital positive or negative accordingly so every year this activity happens theek hai itna samjha theek hai very clear very 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 clear right now tell me if i tell you these three words non performing asset what do you think it means banks non performing asset matlab kya this does not become non performing because this is safe always remember they can sell government bonds they can sell gold this can become non performing what is this loans and advances given to people given to customers given to companies yes or no so when they fail to repay I am a bank. ये मेरा main business है This has to perform well. What do I mean by performing? Which means कि he is repaying the loan on time. He is giving interest on time. Sorry, he is giving interest on time. Yes or no? This also has to come in every month, every quarter, या every year, whatever. समझा? So you, when you have to, so when you don't or when you default on your loans, you you might get a call. कि sir, please pay your interest or please pay your EMI, right? So this has to function well. and this has to function well yes or no when these don't function which means when you don't receive your loan and advances ka repayment and your interest for 90 days after due date due date aaj hai you have to pay today but you didn't pay for 90 days which means bank did not receive loan and advance ka repayment bank did not receive interest on loan and advance ka 
इंटरेस्ट ऑन लोन एंड एडवांस फॉर 90 डेज हाउ मेनी डेज 90 डेज देन बैंक्स विल से कि आई दैट लोन एंड एडवांस इज माय नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट नाउ व्हाई व्हाई वी कॉल इट नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट व्हाई वी कॉल इट एज नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट because bank is not able to recover this and if this is not bank is not able to recover this ye to milega hi nahi are you understanding this theek hai this is very important part we are doing this is the core of banking i would say i always start with the core and then baki ka aaju baaju ka things i tell because they are they are important but they are not that conceptually advanced so you know if i if i tell you if i give you five pages to read about history of banking you will be able to understand history of banking kya tha kya ho gaya but this is something which you need my help for so that is why i'm investing much uh, more time on this only theek hai okay next next so what do you mean by non performing asset which means that your loan in advance is not performing ठीक है फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव यू हैव वॉट अ मोबाइल फोन इट इज योर इन्वेस्टमेंट येस और नो इज मोबाइल फोन योर इन्वेस्टमेंट येस बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू गिव यू बेनिफिट फॉर फ्यूचर इज मोबाइल फोन योर एसेट येस मोबाइल फोन इज योर एसेट इफ इट डज नॉट परफॉर्म इफ इट हैंग्स और फाइनली वेन इट डाइज वॉट डू यू डू इट बिकम्स अ नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट फॉर यू येस और नो इट डज नॉट गिव यू एनी फर्दर बेनिफिट सिमिलरली वेन बैंक सी that banks had given loan to let's say tata and tata is not repaying the loan for 90 days after the due date due date hota hai that every 15th of the month you have to pay the interest light bill ka due date hota hai everything due date is there for 90 days after the due date if banks do not receive the repayment of principal repayment of interest on loans banks then tell that it is my non performing asset itna samjha did you understand this very simple now we will add one more layer i hope you understood this is it very clear or not so clear now i want to make some additions to this okay okay now so what banks do is normally this is their assets do you agree main asset loan and advances this is the main engine of their banks growth so what banks do is banks categorize them kaun se acche hai kaun se bure hai which are good which are bad so when we when we speak about good assets see assets means what loans and advances so if bank has given loan to 100 customers today it will categorize ki who is paying who is not paying barabar hai so who is paying is a performing asset yes or no so it it is called as a standard asset standard samajh rahe standard normal hai standard asset now who is not paying what would you call them sub standard not paying ya non standard but we use the term sub standard theek hai sub standard ye samjha you just are you are finding which ones are rotten which ones are good ones theek hai why are you doing this because you need to focus on them ye to chal raha hai they are going good so let them repay let them enjoy their money let them repay i am earning my interest and all but we have to focus on them so vasuli ka call will go to them yes or no some banks also send some thugs or intimidation uh, techniques they use ki repay otherwise we'll do legal case on you and all theek hai so banks have to focus on this now tell me why why is this a big problem matlab loans going bad why do you think is a big problem it is the main lifeline of the bank yes or no if this goes what do you think will happen to this iske liye kuch bachega hi nahi deposits see always remember out of this loan is given and out of repayment of this deposits are also repaid right so when your fd matures after 10 years bank has given an almost corresponding loan of 10 years of your money to someone so he will repay after 10 years bank will repay that money to you so if this goes see this is how much 18% 4% we know okay but it is not enough this is for a security this is just backup but it is not enough to sustain the entire bank so if this goes completely can i say this will go completely 
कैन आई से इनकम साइड विल कोलैप्स बट एक्सपेंसिस वुड स्टिल रिमेन बिकॉज डिपॉजिट पे तो देना है लॉसेस विल माउंट वेन लॉसेस माउंट वॉट विल हैपन कैपिटल विल रिड्यूस दिस विल ऑल्सो गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड दिस विल ऑल्सो गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड एवरी थिंग गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड सो वेन वन बैंक गेट्स डिस्ट्रॉयड आई टोल्ड यू इन द क्रेडिट क्रिएशन दिस थिंग chain when one bank gets destroyed it affects all the other banks yes or no because one bank's money is with other bank that money is with some other bank that money is with some other bank so wahan pe repayment nahi hua so all this chain gets damaged do you agree that this is the main financial lifeline and life breath of the economy so that is why npi is such an important problem non performing asset is such a big problem and you know such a massive problem that uh, क्या होता है कि वन सब स्टैंडर्ड लोन कैन अफेक्ट एवरीथिंग सो दैट इज वाई बैंक हैव टू ऑलवेज वर्क ऑन रिड्यूसिंग दिस और इंक्रीजिंग दिस रिड्यूसिंग दिस राइट ठीक है सो दीज आर एनपीएस दीज आर नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट्स आई कैन कॉल सब स्टैंडर्ड नॉट ऑल लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस आर एनपीएस सो आई कैन कॉल दीज एज एनपीएस ठीक है इतना समझा सो इफ आई टेल यू इफ आई टेल यू NPAs are 10 percent. किसका होगा 10 percent? What do you think? Total loans and advances, which means 90 percent are good ones. Substandard are NPAs. ठीक है? I'll tell you the current affairs. Recently, RBI has released the financial stability report. When you prepare very dedicatedly for your prelims examinations, you know those two three months before the prelims exam, when you do that, you have to read a lot of reports and who the report name and who gave the reports. because that is being asked in the exam ki this report is issued by whom imf world bank etc etc so you have to read ki which organization issues which reports you don't have to report read the reports in detail but you have to read which organization gives which reports so there is one organization by rbi uh, one report by rbi called as financial stability report every 6 months it gives financial stability naam mein likha hai kya hai wo financial stability report it said that around 12% is the npa ratio मतलब क्या नाउ डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड उसका मतलब क्या सब स्टैंडर्ड एसेट्स और एनपीएस आर 12 परसेंट ऑफ टोटल लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस नाउ व्हाट डू यू थिंक इज इट लेस और इट इज मोर इट इज वेरी हाई आउट ऑफ 100 लोन्स 12 लोन्स आर गोइंग बैड जस्ट इमेजिन इट शुड बी 1 2 3 परसेंट मैक्स दो तीन लोग होते हैं आउट ऑफ 100 पीपल बट नॉट 12 पीपल नाउ व्हाई एनपीएस हैपेंड व्हाई एवरीथिंग हैपेंड वी विल गो इनटू द हिस्ट्री एंड ऑल बट फर्स्ट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज एनपी एग्जैक्टली इतना समझा डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस मच वेरी क्लियर क्रिस्टल क्लियर से दिस यू विल नॉट फाइंड इन एनी बुक्स दिस इज नॉट देयर एनी वेयर सम ऑफ द पार्ट वुड बी देयर बट एक्सप्लेनेशन इन दिस मैनर इज नॉट देयर एंड आई एम ट्राइंग टू सिंपलीफाई इट एज मच एज पॉसिबल ठीक है बिकॉज़ व्हेन दिस हैपेंस डू यू थिंक इसके ऊपर ये मिलता है डू यू थिंक एंड व्हेन इट बिकम सब स्टैंडर्ड डू यू थिंक इंटरेस्ट ऑन लोन्स वी आर गेटिंग वी आर नॉट गेटिंग दैट इज व्हाई इट इज एनपीए हाउ यस on interest on npas we are not getting interest on loans and advances yes or no when this stops for 90 days when this stops for 90 days it is transferred here so iske upar ye to nahi milta hai na this is stopped so your income stream is stopped so out of 100 you are getting income from only 88 people 12 people have stopped giving you income and what was the threshold 90 days 90 days after due date due date ke baad 90 days tak you have to wait and then after 90 days uh you have to classify them as npas itna samjha very clear now let us add one more layer what do you think loans are secured or unsecured they are both some are secured some are unsecured i hope you know secured and unsecured secured means what they are secured by some security they are backed by some security so which are more risky for banks to give out unsecured loans or secured loans unsecured loans are more risky because if they don't repay you don't have anything to do vasuli when you have secured loans when you have secured loans you have some security with you ki if they don't repay i will sell that security and i will get my cash yes or no so banks have some security so loans are of two types secured Unsecured. ठीक है एनपीए का वॉट इज द थ्रेश होल्ड फॉर एनपीए नाइंटी डेज वॉट इज द करंट अप्रोक्सीमेट लेवल अप्रोक्स करंट लेवल ट्वेल्व परसेंट 
इज दिस क्लियर ठीक है नाउ आई वॉन्ट टू टीच यू समथिंग विच फॉर्म्स द बेसिस ऑफ डीलिंग विथ एन पी एस राइट इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ टेल मी वेन यू क्लासीफाई अ लोन एज एन पी ए वेन यू क्लासीफाई अ लोन एज सब स्टैंडर्ड डू यू थिंक यू शुड कीप इट इन योर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट और यू शुड राइट इट ऑफ और यू शुड रिमूव इट फ्रॉम योर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट थिंक एंड टेल मी वेन यू आर राइटिंग सी अल्टीमेटली इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस सो इफ आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड लेट से ट्वेल्व आर सब स्टैंडर्ड बट यू आर स्टिल शोइंग हंड्रेड एज लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस उसके अंदर यू आर क्लासीफाइंग नो डाउट बट यू आर स्टिल शोइंग हंड्रेड एज लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस so is it good to do that or you have to reduce your loans and advances because they are not performing they have rotten so just remove them away and remaining fruits kitna hai wo bata what do you think is the right approach to this should you keep those 12 loans in your books of accounts or you should remove those 12 loans from your accounts books you should remove those 12 loans from your loans and advances you should you know reduce your loans and advances by the amount of those 12 loans think and tell me this is where our brains are used think and tell how appropriate it is to keep those 12 loans in your loans and advances book should you keep them or remove them we should try to remove them because why i'll tell you लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस कौन से हेडिंग में आते देखा अंडर विच हेडिंग एसेट्स बट वो एसेट्स है ही नहीं तुम्हारा इट इज नॉट गिविंग यू एनी बेनिफिट एनी मोर राइट इफ योर कार डजेंट वर्क इफ इट इज स्क्रैप यू कैन नॉट से आई हैव फाइव कार्स यू हैव टू से आई हैव थ्री कार्स टू कार्स डोंट वर्क वो चलती नहीं है सो आई हैव थ्री वर्किंग कार्स यस और नो यार वैसे तो मेरे पास चार मोबाइल है बट दो थ्री मोबाइल्स आर लॉन्ग गॉन नो बैटरी नथिंग दे डोंट वर्क ओनली यस और नो सो यू डोंट से कि आई हैव सो लेट से योर फोन इज वॉटर डैमेज it doesn't work now it is beyond repair now so can you say i have a phone you can't say i have a phone when we say i have asset it should be performing so you should try to remove them yes or no do you agree with this you should try to remove them theek hai so when we when we remove them off completely when we remove them off completely it is called as it is called as write off theek hai write off means what khatam kar do write off write off khatam kar do when we remove them completely right when we remove them completely now i'm going to tell you so many teach you so many terms right okay most important term i'm going to teach you pay attention here when i remove this completely what do you think will happen my loans and advances will reduce is it true or false it is true theek okay? hai so if i write if i remove 100 rupees worth of loans from my loans and advances is it my profit or my loss it is my loss because earlier it was giving me income but now it is not giving me income so where will i where would i write that 100 here or here i would write it as here simple hai theek hai okay now let's say let's say that other person tells me ki sir i will not be able to give you 100 if you give me some more time of 5 years i will be able to give you 80 what option would you take would you take whatever you are getting or would you write it off completely you would take whatever you are getting banks would be like theek hai 80 to 80 sahi so then by what amount would you write off by 8 by 100 or by 80 or by 20 You would write off twenty rupees because eighty he is still agreeing to give. समझा? Right? So यहाँ पे कितना आएगा? Hundred eighty or twenty? Twenty. Whatever amount you are writing it off, it will be, it will come here. Right? Now very important part I am going to tell you. What you do is what you normally do is when you write that off or when you write it down or when you remove it. you take a hit on your expenses barabar you you increase your expenses because wo gaya that is gone that is my expense now whenever see i told you see coming back to the basics what happens what is the main difference between capital expenses and revenue expenditure 
वॉट इज द मेन डिफरेंस कि वन इज विच गिवस यू लॉन्ग टर्म बेनिफिट वन इज गिवस यू शॉर्ट टर्म बेनिफिट तो यर योर एसेट इज डिस्ट्रॉइड ठीक है योर एसेट यू ब्रॉट अ न्यू कार इट इज डिस्ट्रॉइड विच मीन्स इट इज योर कंप्लीट लॉस टूडे ओनली अज्यूमिंग देर इज नो इंश्योरेंस एंड ऑल इट इज योर कंप्लीट लॉस टूडे सो यू विल वॉट विल यू से कि आज मेरा नुकसान हो गया वॉट विल यू से कि आई स्पेंड फाइव लैख रुपीज सो देन योर डजेंट योर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर बिकम अ रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर इन नेचर बिकॉज योर बेनिफिट वॉज ओनली फॉर वन डे एंड इट इज गॉन सो यू यू विल राइट इट इन योर एक्सपेंसिव शीट इज इट क्लियरली अंडरस्टूड ठीक है चलो नाउ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन यू राइट दैट ट्वेंटी ईयर लेट एस एज्यूम की ही इज रेडिंग टू रेडी टू गिव एटी वेन यू राइट दैट ट्वेंटी ईयर आर यू प्रिपेरिंग फॉर एन इवेंचुअल लॉस और लेट मी फ्रेज इट दिस वे देर आर सम फ्रूट्स विच यू सी दे माइट रॉट बट दे हैव नॉट रॉट एन कंप्लीटली एट ठीक है वॉट वॉट डू यू डू यू मेंटली प्रिपेयर की ये फ्रूट खराब होने वाला है या तो अभी खा लो विच मीन्स कॉल इम अप एंड टेल इम टू रीपे या तो कीप दे मसाइड प्रिपेयर फॉर इट समझा सो वॉट डू यू डू इज कि इन इन केस ऑफ एन पी एज वेन वी स्पीक अबाउट एन पी एज वॉट डू यू डू इज कि यू स्टार्ट यू स्टार्ट टेकिंग हिट्स यर धीरे धीरे यू डोंट राइट ऑफ एंटायर हंड्रेड आफ्टर इट बिकेम एन एन पी ए के बाद यू डोंट राइट इट एज हंड्रेड वॉट यू डू इज स्टार्ट राइटिंग टेन ऑफ टेन टूडे ट्वेंटी टूमोरो ट्वेंटी फाइव देन अगेन राइट टेन ऐसा धीरे धीरे एवरी ईयर यू स्टार्ट राइटिंग इट ऑफ बिकॉज ही इज रिपेइंग थोड़ा सा ही इज नॉट रिपेइंग थोड़ा समटाइम्स ही रिपेज समटाइम्स ही डजेंट रिपे राइट सो वॉट यू डू इज यू स्टार्ट राइटिंग इट ऑफ लिटिल बाय लिटिल वाई यू आर राइटिंग इट ऑफ लिटिल बाय लिटिल बिकॉज इफ यू राइट एंटायर हंड्रेड ईयर देन यूर एंटायर ईयर लॉस वुड लॉस वुड बी इंक्रीज बाय एक्सपोनशियल अमाउंट पूरा हंड्रेड एक्सपेंस आ गया मतलब यूर लॉस वुड बी यूज सो वॉट यू डू इज धीरे धीरे यू राइट ठीक है लिटिल बाय लिटिल यू कीप ऑन रिड्यूसिंग यूर लिटिल लिटिल यू कीप ऑन रिड्यूसिंग यूर डिपेंडिंग ऑन द रिकवरेबिलिटी समझाइए ठीक है सो दिस इज नोन एज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो कैन आई से यू आर यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर यूर एन पी एस विच मीन्स यू आर कीपिंग सम मनी असाइड सी इफ आई टेल यू कि आउट ऑफ योर टोटल सैलरी यू हैव टू कीप टू थाउजेंड रुपीज असाइड फॉर फॉर लेट से गिविंग इट टू योर फ्रेंड टू थाउजेंड रुपीज यू हैव टू कीप इट असाइड इज इट योर इनकम और योर एक्सपेंस इट इज योर एक्सपेंस बिकॉज यू कीप इट असाइड यू कैनॉट यूज इट ठीक है सो वॉट बैंक डू इज बैंक डू द सेम थिंग बैंक डू द सेम थिंग दे कीप सम मनी असाइड जैसे दे सी ना एन पी होने वाला है दे स्टार्ट कीपिंग सम मनी असाइड वाई बिकॉज वेन दे विल राइट इट ऑफ कंप्लीटली दे विल नीड टू टेक दैट हिट सो दे विल स्टार्ट दे विल स्टार्ट कीपिंग सम मनी असाइड नाउ दैट वर्ड द की वर्ड द अकाउंटिंग वर्ड फॉर दैट कीपिंग मनी असाइड इज कॉल्ड एज सी इंग्लिश provisioning provisioning means you are keeping some money aside you are preparing for an eventual downfall you know ki pandemic lockdown is going to happen dheere dheere you keep saving money or dheere dheere you keep keeping your money aside you know that you are going to you are not going to get that money this thing always remember this is an expense of the bank because banks if this np had not been there banks wouldn't have to provide for this so this is always an expense this is a hit on your profits This reduces your profits. Na expense hai to it will reduce your profits. It is very important to understand provisioning. Did you understand provisioning? Provisioning is nothing but I'll repeat. Provisioning is nothing but keeping some money aside when your loans start to become NPAs. It is keeping some money aside. Keeping some money aside means dire dire slowly slowly you are taking your hit or slowly slowly you are increasing your expenses, right? So see this. If you provide ten year, you will reduce ten year. है ना बिकॉज इट इज नॉट यूर यू आर टेकिंग सो आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड यू से कि टेन रुपीज तो मुझे नहीं मिलने वाला है डेफिनेटली नाइनटी मैं बात करके देखता हूँ आई जस्ट टॉक टू हिम एंड आई स्पीक अबाउट नाइनटी सो यू टेन रुपीज फिनिश गॉन सो बेसिकली वॉट यू आर डूइंग इज यू आर कन्वर्टिंग यूर रिमेंबर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर रिजल्ट इन क्रिएशन ऑफ एसेट्स वेन इट वेन दैट एसेट गेट्स डिस्ट्रॉइड इट टर्न इन टू अ रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर सो बेसिकली यू आर कन्वर्टिंग यूर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर इन टू रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर येस और नो all basics are linked to each other did you understand this so as far as the asset is giving you benefit it is your capital expenditure tomorrow when the asset does not give you benefit it becomes your revenue expenditure khatam na because benefit in capital expenditure what is the criteria benefit is expected to last for a long time but when it does not last for a long time it becomes your today's expenditure 
So what you are doing here is you are converting your capital expenditure into revenue expenditure, which means you are taking a hit on your today's profit only, which means you are saying that I had given him 100 rupees loan, 10 rupees so is not going to repay. Chalo, 10 rupees is not going to repay. So let me forget about those 10 rupees by including it in my loss. Gaya na, loss ho gaya. So you will write it as your expense, not as your income, obviously. So 10 rupees you are providing for. Providing means side mein rakhre, which means I am providing for, I am incurring my loss. See, when parents keep money aside on your marriage or on your school education, when you are born, parents keep some money aside every month because when you will be of marriage age, they will need that money. When you will be going to school and higher education, they will need that money. They are doing nothing but they are providing for you, yes or no? Does that reduce their income or reduce their ex uh, expense? That reduces their income because for them it is an expense only. Ki abhi nahi, but kabhi na kabhi they will have to do kharcha. Which means ki if they are providing, let's say out of a salary of 70,000, they are keeping 20,000 aside, which means they are not able to enjoy the 20,000 because they have to give provide for your fees and all. Same thing bank is doing, bank is keeping some money aside. Now some money aside means it is taking it as loss. It is considering it as loss. Khatam ho gaya hai mera ho. Right? Now twist, if he repays that 10 rupees tomorrow, which I have already reduced from it, what I will do? I will reduce it from here. I will write it here. 10 rupees income aagaya na. Simple. Expense kam ho gaya, income aagaya. Did you understand provisioning? This is the most important part. Once you understand provisioning, everything else is very easy. From now on, we are at the peak of our conceptual level. Iske baad se from now on, things go downhill only. Okay, this, this visualization is very important because if I told you provisioning is done when money is kept aside, thoda side mein, but unless you see it is under expense side, you would not realize ki what is provisioning. So can I write, can I write here ki the amount by which I am providing for has to be reduced from my NPA? Yes or no? Today 100 rupees pura NPA nahi hai. See, what happens if today 100 rupees pura NPA hota hai? What, what, what would it result in? 100 rupees coming here writing it off entirely but he is saying ki, sir i will i will be able to pay you 70 rupees sir 30 rupees i will not be able to repay see we will take penalty and all wo to hai wo to side mein ja. but but would we write off entire 100 or we will be okay with writing of 30 because he is going to give so here minus 30 here plus 30 do you agree i am providing for it let us say usse baat nahi ho he has gone to a trek on himalaya we couldn't contact him but we know that he has defaulted, 91 days ho which means it has turned NPA, 91 days ho gai, he has turned NPA, what would you do? Safely you would assume ki thoda to likhna padega idhar, see how much to write, we are not getting into that, that is all calculation, they are accounting standards for that, banking laws for that. But when you know ki 91 days ho gai, the probability of repayment reduces by every passing day, yes or no, because pay karna ho to abhi kar deta, at least something he would have paid. So you would start writing your provisioning, yes or no? Little by little you will start, you will start reducing by here. Now what do you think? As time passes, would provisions increase or provisions reduce? As time passes, provisions would increase and this would reduce. Okay? We all agree this has to be reduced because it does not reflect the true amount of your loans and advances. Do you agree with this? Okay. So when you write off, when you write off, what did I tell you? Write it off. Okay? So when it is complete, Pura pura khatami kar dete ho, that is called writing off. When you write off little bit of it, it is a very English variation. Na? When you write off little bit of it, it is called as write down. Write down samjha? It is called as write down. So when I say, when I say NPA is written down from 100 to 80, how much have we provided? 20 rupees. Thik hai? When I say NPA has been written off by 100 rupees, which means pura 100 rupees khatam ho gaya hai. Write down means you are writing it down to the new value. Earlier it was 100, I am writing it down to 80 rupees. Samjha? Kuch nahi English ka hi variation. It is a play of English words. Write off and write down. Right? What is provisioning? What, what is provisioning? Keeping aside some part of your substandard assets or, substand or NPAs in your expenses, huh? as your expenses, recognizing some part as your expenses, uh, slowly, slowly, as probability of repayment reduces. Barabar? That is called as provisioning. You are providing for it. 
today only you are providing for it today only you are taking little bit of loss today only you are taking little bit of hit so what do true or nay true or false me which of them is uh, correct one 100% provisioning is write down or 100% provisioning is write off write off 100% provisioning is write off theek hai chalo answer me this if i say ki 100 rupees ka loan hai i have provided for 18 rupees how much i have written down by and how much i have written down to samjha by and to 100 rupees you see 100 rupees ka npa hai you see 18 rupees ka provision hai 18 one it so how much first question how much rupees have i written down by i have written it down by 18 rupees how much rupees i have written it down to 72 rupees 72 hota na नहीं 82 82 82 रुपीस ठीक है समझा राइट ऑफ राइट डाउन इफ आई शो यू 100 रुपीस का एनपी इफ आई शो यू 100 रुपीस का प्रोविजनिंग हाउ मच हैव आई रिटर्न इट ऑफ बाय 100 रुपीस पूरा ही खत्म कर दिया हमने राइट try to revise these concepts once in your mind i'll give you 10 15 seconds just try to look at them and If you understood this na, trust me, things would become very easier. You know, कैसा क्वेश्चन आता है यूपीएससी एग्जाम में विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर इन दट साइड ऑफ बैंक बैलेंस शीट दो तीन चीजें टू थ्री थिंग्स दे गिव एंड दे से विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर नॉट एसेट साइड एंड देन वन ऑफ द ऑप्शन इज डिपोजिट डिपोजिट इज नॉट एसेट साइड इट इज अ लाइबिलिटी बट वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड दिस वॉज नॉट देर इन द बुक्स वेन द क्वेश्चन केम बेर इन माइंड आई हैव बीन टीचिंग दिस इन दिस अप्रोच सिंस थ्री ईयर्स इट केम इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन द and that question's answer was not there in any of the books abhi hoga because after the question they are included in the books but i have been teaching this since 2017 and my students then told me ki other other questions we don't know but that question we were able to blindly mark it deposits is the answer so it is very important to understand everything conceptually and they had asked that question because of npa problem was rising but then nobody knew ki deposit liability hota hai loans and advances asset hota hai you don't know that ठीक है यू शुड नो कंसेप्चुअल एंड दैट इज आई एम हियर डोंट वरी वॉट एवर आई फील इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इज रेलिवेंट आई विल टीच यू बुक्स बुक्स कवर ऑलमोस्ट एवरीथिंग सो यू रीड बुक्स ऑल्सो सो योर प्रिपरेशन गेट्स होल सम देर विल स्टिल बी वन और टू क्वेश्चन विच यू माइट नॉट बी एबल टू आंसर बट एटलीस्ट कंसेप्चुअली यू कैन थिंक अबाउट इट सो टुमारो इफ इट टुमारो इफ अ क्वेश्चन कम्स की यू नो प्रोविजनिंग हैज इंक्रीज सो प्रोविजनिंग हैज इंक्रीज वॉट इफेक्ट डज दैट हैव ऑन आर लोन्स एंड एडवांसेज loans and advances have reduced or increased provisioning has increased loans and advances are reduced yes or no because you are converting your capital expenditure into your revenue expenditure theek hai i'll tell you one more example of converting capital expenditure into revenue expenditure kai hala one more example of converting capital expenditure into revenue expenditure do you know we learned something in our initial sessions called as depreciation what is it reduction in the value no gross minus that is see again i tell you i'm telling you don't remember the formulas and all what is depreciation is what i asked reduction in the value of your asset theek hai when you purchase that asset worth 1 lakh rupees you had incurred a capital expenditure every month you see ki productivity is reducing ठीक है, सो यू रिड्यूस योर वन लैक का एसेट का वैल्यू टू नाइनटी नाइन थाउजेंड टू मोरो एंड यू राइट थाउजेंड ऑफ की इट इज माई एक्सपेंस इज इट नॉट कन्वर्टिंग कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर इन टू रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर बिट बाई बिट ठीक है सेम है सेम है इमेजिन दिस इज योर मशीन एंड दिस इज योर डेप्रिसिएशन सो वेन एवर इट टर्न नॉन परफॉर्मिंग वेन एवर द एफिशियंसी रिड्यूस वेन एवर द एक्टिविटी रिड्यूस you have to write off you have to reduce little bit of depreciation so that depreciation will reduce from here you will consider it as your expense now this is most understood ki reduce from here but why to write it here because that is your expense ho oh, gaya it is gone right tomorrow if you buy a phone worth rupees 30000 rupees and if you notice that the screen is broken when you go to sell it it will not sell for 30000 rupees it will sell for barely 10 15000 because screen is broken so that 10 15000 is it not your revenue expenditure yes कैपिटल का तो सवाल ही नहीं होता है दैट इट इज नॉट गिविंग यू बेनिफिट वर्थ थर्टी थाउजेंड ठीक है सिमिलरली दिस इज योर मशीनरी बैंक्स मशीनरी है ये एंड दिस इज द डेप्रिसिएशन अमाउंट 
लिटिल बिट एज टाइम पास इज योर एफिशियंसी लूज इज समझा डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग इज दिस एन पी ए दिस इज नॉट इज दिस एन पी ए नाउ बैंक हैव रिटर्न लाइक हंड्रेड रुपीज एज एन पी ए ठीक है उसके सामने बैंक हैव प्रोवाइडेड फॉर ट्वेंटी रुपीज बराबर है इट इज वेरी सिंपल राइट सो वेन यू सो लेट से देर इज अ लोन ऑफ हंड्रेड रुपीज एंड बैंक हैव प्रोवाइडेड ट्वेंटी रुपीज इन फ्रंट ऑफ इट विच मीन्स उसका ट्वेंटी रुपीज बैंक हैज प्रोवाइडेड ठीक है ग्रॉस फिगर हाउ मच इट इज हंड्रेड और एटी ग्रॉस इज हंड्रेड नेट फिगर कितना है एटी रुपीज सो कैन आई से एनपीए माइनस प्रोविजन इज नेट एनपीए बराबर सिंपल वेरी गुड सी दिस ग्रॉस एनपीए माइनस प्रोविजनिंग इज नेट एनपीए समझा ये सिंपल है Gross NPA minus provisions is net NPA. So if you, so the 12% ratio which I told you, 12%. Sir, what is this? Gross NPA or net NPA? This is gross NPA. Gross NPA upon total loans and advances, है ना? ठीक है सी आई टेल यू द लेटेस्ट हेडलाइन ऑल्सो आई टेल यू द लेटेस्ट हेडलाइन टू डेज अगो ही आया टू डेज अगो आर बी आई फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी रिपोर्ट नहीं विल सी इट हियर ओनली वेदर यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड और नॉट ठीक है लाइव ही देख लेते See this. RBI Financial Stability Report: Banks' gross NPA ratio may rise to 9.8 percent by March 2022, could reach to 11.22 percent in severe stress. ठीक है, so what I told is, अभी it is 10 to 12 percent. मैंने ऐसे approximate बोल दिया था. It is actually 9.8 percent, but it could reach to 11.22 percent in severe stress. You can, so let us open this randomly. I have not even read this. ठीक है लेट अस सी वेदर वी आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस दिस टाइम अराउंड आरबीआई फोरकास्ट दैट बैड लोन्स रेट ऑफ बैंक्स विल इंक्रीज टू 9.8 परसेंट बाय मार्च 22 अंडर द बेस लाइन सिनेरियो बेस लाइन मीन्स इफ करंट ट्रेंड्स कंटिन्यू एंड टू 11.22 पॉइंट टू अंडर सीवियर स्ट्रेस सो वॉट दे डू इज दे पुट स्ट्रेस की लेट अस से those who have lost their jobs they are not able to repay the loan aisa so they adverse creation they they create adverse scenarios ki aisa ho gaya to kya aisa ho gaya to kya and then they see this you subscribe karna mat i have a subscription but yahan pe i will i cannot log in let us see this see this do we understand some things here RBI said that bank credit growth. What is credit growth? Loan growth. Credit growth, loan growth has remained tepid. Tepid means small. Impacted by lockdowns and associated restrictions. On the other hand, deposit growth maintained its upward trajectory. Deposit means loans and advance. Sorry, deposits, liability side with current account and savings account. Remember, I told you they are called as casa deposits, leading the way, reflecting a continued preference for precautionary savings. Why precautionary savings? Because they are considered to be safe. Keeping money in bank is considered to be safe instead of keeping in gold or shares. Further, the central bank highlighted that SCBs are scheduled commercial banks. Do we know scheduled commercial banks? Return on assets and return on equity. No need, no need, no need. We are going to come to all of that. ठीक है. अभी we have just started the journey. ठीक है. चल. ठीक है. This is done. Gross NPA provisioning net NPA. So how banks show it as 
bank show 100 rupees here and bank show 20 rupees here so we have to calculate net np as 80 rupees samjha itna so far so good right what is write off writing it off completely what is write down you take some cut cut lete ho na now what is that cut known as that cut is known as haircut that cut is known as haircut for example you have given 100 rupees worth of loan that guy is saying ki sir 90 i will be able to repay you say fine give 90 10 i am taking it as my loss so that 10 would be called as haircut so haircut is often expressed in terms of percentage so 10 percent haircut means what so similarly when you go to buy clothes they sell it at a discount so they say ki madam i have already reduced 20 percent so that 20 percent discount is your haircut and they are not going to recover that 20 percent okay capital samjha ye samjha ye samjha is everything clear very good now tell me now tell me i have given you two things secured and unsecured so when we start provisioning when we start providing for when the npa starts to turn bad just starts to turn bad would we provide for so let's say a loan we have given of 100 rupees he has given a security worth 40 rupees that 40 rupees is your secured portion 60 rupees is your unsecured portion so which would you provide first you would provide for the secured portion first or unsecured portion first unsecured portion first because that is going to be your loss secured is never going to be your loss unless whatever he has given will be false nickle or whatever he has given will be nakli nickle yes or no so he has given you a security of diamonds unless those diamonds are nakli you can recover them any time so 40 percent of tension nahi hai but secured portion you will reduce you will start providing for secured person yes or no okay so i'm i'm not going into details i'm just going to tell you how provisioning happens so when it turns NPS, what are NPS? Can I say substandard assets are NPS? Yes. But NPS are also different types. Ki kitna provide karna hai, that depends on the severity. Kitna khara hua hai. Can we all agree ki this starts after 90 days? This process starts after 90 days. Hai? But after 90 days, you know ki it is khara. But how much khara? So if I if I if I give you two loans, one loan is NPA since 95 days, which means what? Uh, sorry, one loan is NPA since five days, which means what? He has defaulted for 95 days. Due date ke 95 days tak he has not paid. And one loan is an NPA for three years, which is worse? Three years, which should be provided for more? Three years. Now that also has a secured unsecured portion. So out of that, which should be provided for more unsecured portion? Yehi logic hai, simple logic. So I'll just tell you when when it becomes 90 days when it becomes a substandard asset it is called as there are different names jinse unko pukara jata hai it is called as 90 days wala jab hota hai more than 90 days wala hai when it reaches the 90 day mark it is called as a see english english Special mention account SMA. Specially usko mention karte ki ispe dhyan do. It has it has just turned substandard. Sabko substandard bolte. Whatever I am going to write, all are substandard. But substandard ke bhi types hai. Thik hai? So all my friends are kamine, but some are genuinely kamine, some are worse kamine. Thik hai? Substandard. Right? So when it becomes 90 days, it becomes substandard. Uh, pay attention here. Then it goes. 90 days mein ye ho jata hai. when it goes for uh, more than 12 months so 90 days say 12 months tak it remains special mention account uske baad more than 12 months which means kya ek saal ho gaya ek saal it is npa now one year it is npa it becomes a doubtful asset shak bad raha hai abhi ki he will not be able to repay theek hai doubtful asset and we call it as the doubtful asset of the first category da1 when it goes from plus 12 months 12 months ke baad or 12 months which means two years basically it becomes doubtful asset 2 okay and the ultimate stage is three years three years ke baad more than three years see you don't need to know this you only need to know ki there are different categories you don't need to remember these time periods not at all Okay, three years ke baad, we call it as we call it as hopeless case 
we call it as loss at khatam loss at theek hai now do you agree with this or do you understand this when i say ki when it becomes a loss asset 100% provision has to be done simple 100% write off has to be done and can i say ki varying degrees of increasing degrees of write off has to be or provisioning has to be done as the loan passes through this category isko thoda kam karenge isko zyada karenge isko zyada karenge we'll provide lesser amount here we'll provide little bit more here little bit more here and full year do you agree with this theek hai yes or no theek hai so these are the levels and in that also where will you provide more secured or unsecured unsecured right so for example i'll just give an example i have some data here just an example ki in this substand sorry special mention category what happens is 25% of unsecured and 15% of secured portion is provided for theek hai when it becomes doubtful asset to 100% of unsecured and 40% of secured is provided for so you are increasing your unsecured and li little by little secured also you are and loss asset mein kya hoga you sell off the asset whatever you recover you recover and you write it off completely samjha did you understand npa accounting npa ka analysis we are going to do ki what happens if npa increases this is all very common but did you understand npa accounting now tell me out of secured and unsecured we have discussed this that is i am asking out of secured and unsecured which ones are called clean loans remember we had discussed this when we were speaking about ways and means advances for center and state yes so which ones are known as clean loans secured or unsecured try not to look in your books behind try to recollect i told you they are called as clean loans because what which ones secured or unsecured unsecured loans because there is no security involved there is no security involved that is why they are called as clean loans theek hai so always remember those loans which are 100% unsecured they don't have any security at all they are always provided for at 100% starting now tell me now tell me if a bank comes to know ki vijay malya has taken a loan he has fled the country he is not repaying the loan he has fled the country let's say after 94 days 94 days ho gaya he has fled the country because np ho gaya he has fled the country and you came to know that he has taken a loan by fraud fake documents de diye he has taken a loan by fraud do you think bank will follow all these stages fraud hai they know ki it is not this loan shouldn't exist in the first place so at the first stage only they will write it off 100% secured ho unsecured ho doesn't matter fraud cases are always 100% written off at the first instance of becoming np unless until he is paying you really don't know whether it is fraud or not ha if he is paying and you came to know it is fraud then also you will write it off you will tell him don't pay we are we are uh, we are filing a case against you but we are writing off your loan samjha itna clear hai did you understand np theek hai where is the income of performing assets where is the income of performing assets where is the income of performing assets interest on loans and advances this is the income of performing assets where is the provisioning for non performing assets provisioning is on the expense side for non performing assets now tell me next layer we are going are you ready to go for the next layer now tell me high iska impact when this increases how does it affect capital think and tell when this increases how does it affect capital hint you have to travel from there to here and then again there this is the hint if npa is increase how does it affect the capital think and tell i mean if npa is increase capital increases or capital reduces that is my question and how and why how and why it increases how and why it reduces this is a tough question but i want you to tell me increase or reduce why increase only substandard i'm talking about
I have said minus loss. I told you when it is a loss, bank will say to the owner, loss ho gaya. I can't, I don't give you more. So capital will reduce. Your logic is absolutely fine. Your conclusion was wrong. Right? See, I'll tell you what happens when this increases, substandard assets increases. What happens? Your provisioning would also increase. When your provisioning increases, which means your expenses are increasing, which means your profits would reduce or your loss will happen. Whatever is the scenario. If profits are reducing, which means earlier 100 rupees was added to the capital, now only 80 rupees would be added. Or if loss happens, then minus hoga, which means your capital would drastically reduce. Okay? Simple hai, right? Now, how to prevent this? That is the question. That's a one small thing. I left this space for a reason. I told you 90 days tak. 90 days ke baad it is classified as a substandard asset, it is classified as an NPA. Samja? What about 0 to 90 days? Which means he has defaulted, but 90 days nahi hua hai. What about that? What do you think karna chahi usko? So, bank keeps on calling him, giving him reminders ki, sir, please pay. It is not an NPA yet. Uh, we will not provide for anything yet. We will not keep a provision yet. But, sir, please, it is good for you and me both. Right and bank can also charge some penalty on late payment that all is there. Okay? So, those assets, but do you think bank will try very hard on those assets to prevent them from turning NPA? Yes, because they will tomorrow prevent, they will tomorrow turn NPA. So, banks will try very hard. So, they maintain a separate list of such assets which are standard by default, which means they have not turned NPAs, but at the same time they need some help. So, they are called as stressed assets. So, they are not NPAs today, they, they are NPAs of tomorrow. That is why banks will keep on following up with them. Banks will tell ki, sir, please, you will become NPA, my business will be lost, my capital would be lost, yes or no, right? So, in stressed assets, bank provides more flexibility. Ki, sir, 100 nahi, but pay 80, but at least pay before 90 days happens. Because according to laws, after the way, the day it hits 90 days, you will become an NPA. Which means I will have to provide something. And I will have to provide something. So that is why stress assets pay bohat sara, bohat flexibility. Now, very important, tell me. There are two people I can see on the liability side who have given money to the bank. Who are they? Two people. Do you agree there are two people? Deposit holder is one. Deposit holder, which means customer. And who? Owner. Also called as shareholder. Yes or no? There are two people. Now, what do you think from an economic, from a government point of view or from a stability point of view, who needs to be protected more? This guy or this guy? Who needs to be protected more? Whose money needs to be protected more? It is this guy. His savings hai hai. Right? He is a salaried person. He is saving here. If, he, if this goes down, livelihoods will be lost. Profits and losses keep on happening in the business. There is a chance that your entire capital would be wiped out. And always bear in mind, owners kitne honge ek bank ke? 100, 500 owners, 1 lakh owners, deposit holders are more than that. So many accounts are opened across India every day in every bank branch. Yes or no? So, one bank collapsing might be a business loss for some people, but might be a livelihood loss for everyone else. Yes or no? So, these guys have to be protected. Now, I am going to another layer, another deep layer. So, please bear in mind with me. Be with me. Another deep layer I am going to add here. So, these guys need to be protected. Yes or no? Theke? Now, how will they be protected? What do you think? How are banks able to repay them? When you keep deposit with the bank, when you withdraw them, some portion comes from here because they have to be kept as a percentage. What about other portions? Iska repayment? Iska repayment aayega, isko jayega. Theke? What if this fails? You will ask the owners, 
put more capital when they put more capital what happens more money comes in the bank and they are able to repay depositors do you agree with this last resort hai but this is the ultimate resort do you agree theek hai so so now tell me one very simple question when npa is increase owners have to put more money in the business or pull out money from the business when npa is increase see when npa is increase we agree capital reduces so when capital reduces banks owners have to put more refill karna hai yes or no to protect the interest of depositor they have to refill it do you agree with this right so that is why law has a particular requirement slr done this is all slr crr na this is all slr crr dependent on this depend on on this now tell me owner ko q why is owner have why is owner required to pay more money in the business to pay deposit holders why ye requirement q why ye naubat q why because this turned npa yes or no so owner is now saying ki the more i grow my business the more chances of nps the more ultimately i have to pay back in the business yes or no government also saw this see banks are in the business of making money so banks are ruthlessly competing so they give loans to anyone they want to increase their loans and advances see always remember banks are not judged on the basis of profitability banks are judged on the basis of size of loans and advances so if hdfc has given total 50000 crores as loans and sbi has given let's say total 32000 so in the rankings hdfc will come up based on the total size of business total scale hota hai na similarly i'll tell you similarly i'll tell you uh, let's say there are various classes so if a classes is having 5000 students it would be considered to be bigger than a class having 500 students profitability bhale now maybe profitability of that small class is more because those 500 are students are paying very high or that class has very high fees and that 5000 wale are very low fees but still which class would you consider to be bigger the 5000 similarly banks are considered or banks are competing on the basis of loans and advances and not on the basis of profitability other business yes profitability banks nahi so now as an owner would you push for higher loans and advances or lower loans and advances as an owner higher loans and advances government saw but this reckless ruthless competing also leads to this barabar if you blindly give loans to anyone just to shore up this this would result when this results these are in khatra yes or no because they don't get their money See, this is very small amount 4% baki 96% kahan se laoge right and 18% chalo right so to protect this government says ki inse paisa mango they are the reason why these are increasing because they are the owners their business strategy is causing loans and advances to increase so whenever these are in trouble ask money from them whom owners what they give capital samjha itna samjha itna now now is it possible to every day call up the owners and ask for money ki sir aaj loan loss ho gaya hai give us money nahi so there are certain laws there are certain ratios just like crr slr there is a ratio which says there is a ratio which says depending on this a percentage of this has to be kept as capital in the business minimum percentage hona hi chahiye utna if this is 100 at least 20 has to be kept here why see this is also act psychologically as an owner you know ki if this goes bad you will have to increase this now tell me if i tell you this is now a percentage of this kept as a percentage of this what do you think will happen to the capital requirements when loans increase capital requirement will also increase so the more you grow the more you have to pay money in the business so you will grow responsibly you will not grow irresponsibly do you agree with this and always remember that percentage is of total loans and not of npas so theek okay? so, <coughs> so if i say if i say the owners have to bring in at least 20% of capital of their loans and advances which means ki 100 rupees is today's loans 20 rupees has to be brought by owners samjhaiye now tomorrow if 100 ka 200 hota hai then more 20 has to be brought by the owners yes or no is it making sense or not ultimate objective kya hai ultimate objective is to protect the depositors because these are the people who are running the economy i'll take you to the very first lecture first content lecture you have seen the first lecture no do you remember this 
डू यू रिमेंबर समथिंग वी डिड दिस फर्म एंड हाउस होल्ड याद है वॉट डू हाउस होल्ड प्रोवाइड टू द फर्म लेबर वॉट डू हाउस होल्ड ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड टू द फर्म मनी फॉर बाइंग प्रोडक्ट्स टू परचेजेस ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स ठीक है इफ बैंक फेल दे वोट हैव मनी इफ बैंक फेल दे वोट हैव मनी दिस गोज इफ दिस गोज दे विल नॉट बी एबल टू प्रोवाइड दिस ऑल्सो इफ दिस फेल्स दिस फेल्स If this fails, third sector fails. Third sector fails. Fourth sector fails. Entire economy collapses. Samjha? That is why I told you every lecture of mine is so important. That <laughs> everything is related. But are you understanding this? Whatever we are talking about here. When bank, when you go for withdrawal, if bank has enough money, very good. But where is that enough money coming from? Loan ka repayment. so when someone repays the loan when you go to withdraw see don't think it happens on a one to one basis ki your money is given to that person as a nahi total money pool hota hai out of lakhs of depositors lakhs of deposits are pooled and then loans are given theek hai so let's say you go to withdraw and bank says ki yes sir take your money F fixed deposit is being withdrawn ho gaya hai five years which means back end mein behind the curtain someone has repaid bank that money and bank is passing that money to you which may it is cutting interest and commission theek okay? hai now bank says ki bank says let's say 5 lakh ka fd you have and you are going to withdraw 5 lakh ka fd bank says internally bank apne manager ko bolta hai you know ki sir iska only 95% we have 5% we don't have what to do what to do first step crr sla we have kept some bonds aside we have kept some gold aside we have kept some cash aside usme se nikalo sell that gold and pay that depositor first that is also not enough what to do call the owners ask them sir we need money why because we need to protect our customer theek hai see i'll give you a very 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 relatable example also if you pay money for a car you pay money for a car that car does not work properly that car has fuel efficiency issues that car has uh you know various issues so will you ask for a new car or you will ask for a refund either of them let's say you bought a new car they exchange your car ki yes sir we agree there is a problem new car also there is a problem they saw that entire model has a problem so you will ask for a refund yes or no ki give me refund let's say they don't so where do they get their money for refund from other car sales let's say that is also not enough they will have to call their owner sir people are asking for refund there are 100 customers who have bought this car they are asking for refund who is the owner the investor or the shareholder sir please give us money because we need to repay them yes or no same customer hai ye he is the customer he needs his money back either you can take it from your normal business which is 99% of the case this is sufficient for this have you ever seen personally have you ever seen your deposits go down no we have not seen there are some cooperative banks which are facing issues we will discuss that theek okay? hai second second resort is this slr crr hai just give them third and ultimate resort is call the owners and ask but calling the owners every day is not feasible one secondly what if they might run away to some foreign country hota hai india mein to bahut hota hai we export a lot of scammers we have an export business in i always tell you know our exports and imports are our, our imports are always more than exports in terms of oil and fuel in terms of scammers our exports are so way ahead than imports theek okay? hai even do you know that world's largest fake scam call centers are in india you read about it there is a netflix documentary also on it called jamtara there is a place in jharkhand theek okay? hai they have uh, shown how credit card frauds work so overall world mein scam scammers jo bolte hai not sophisticated frauds are not doom type frauds not those kind of robberies and frauds low level frauds ki sir we are giving you free gift you have to pay us 20000 rupees to process your gift sir i am the prince of nigeria i am giving you my all wealth theek i used to get a lot of such spam emails so now to i have gmail earlier uh, yahoo was also in fashion when you know we started using internet and all so i had my first email in yahoo.com वहां पे तो बहुत स्पैम आते थे नाउ तो नाउ तो सिक्योरिटी हैज बीन मोर एडवांस सो नाउ यू डोंट गेट बट नाउ यू गेट नाउ यू गेट डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ स्पैम ईमेल्स की यू हैव वन अ गिफ्ट 
and we are offering you free credit card now that might be a genuine free credit card or that might be a scam so all world's majority scam centers are located in india and this is as per a report by microsoft as per a report by credit suisse cs it is a bank it is a global bank india mein hai so we i always tell we export a lot of scam be it in person be it services in person also we export and hamari reach kahan kahan hai london antigua and barbuda mayo jokshi is there we reach various places no nobody knows how many people have see these are the famous people which we know of but there are hundreds of people which we don't know of which flee the country the point being let's say vijay malya who ran away if he had a bank kingfisher bank do you think it was possible for bank people to call him ki sir we need money we need to protect them nahi so that is why a law is there there is a regulation which says that a certain percentage of loans and advances has to be kept as capital at all times so tomorrow even if one loan you give new uska certain percentage keep it as capital automatically hona hi chahiye the banks who do not follow this face direct action in the hands of rbi samjha who is the owner of public sector banks government majority owner government hai so government also has to keep a lot of capital invested samjha so tomorrow if sbi tomorrow sbi ka ratio falls down so let's say I, we set the ratio as 20% So, if loans and advances is hundred rupees, how much capital has to be kept? Twenty rupees. Tomorrow, if loans and advances go to five hundred rupees, how much capital has to be kept? Hundred rupees. Okay, so that government will fuse in money, right? Let me take you one one. I uh, mean, we have to discuss this later on, but let me take you one step further. If these are good loans, no problem. if these are bad loans what happens they are not giving the return also barabar you are increasing your loans and advances but they are not turning out to be good you are buying more fruits but they are not good fruits they are not giving you any benefit yes or no government has to keep on putting in capital do you agree as loans and advances increase whose money is government putting in the bank where is bank uh, government getting that money from tax payers So your money is being used to capitalize banks whose NPAs are increasing. Understand? As a taxpayer, you are leading to inefficiency of bank to protect depositor. Understand? These are all complexities of the economy, and uh, this is what happens. And this is all discussed. You know, matters like these are discussed in economic survey. So you need to understand all these things before you can read that. Okay? Now. इंग्लिश है प्योर इंग्लिश प्योर इंग्लिश प्लीज पे अटेंशन यर बिफोर राइटिंग एनीथिंग डिड आई डिड आई टॉक टू यू अबाउट अ रेशियो विच बैंक ओनर्स हैव टू कीप इन्वेस्टेड इन द बिजनेस एज अ पार्ट ऑफ देयर लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस एज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ द लोन्स एंड एडवांसेस अभी जो भी स्पोक हंड्रेड रुपीज इज योर लोन ट्वेंटी रुपीज दैट रेशियो दैट रेशियो इंग्लिश दैट रेशियो इज कॉल्ड सी दिस do you understand this capital adequacy ratio which means adequate capital has to be kept adequate capital has to be kept as a percentage of your loans and advances theek okay? hai there is one more sophisticated name for it jisse aur samajh mein aa jayega nahi aur samajh mein nahi aayega rather there is one more sophisticated name for this pay attention here it is the same thing it is see this capital 2 to assets ratio do, do, do you understand this capital to assets ratio assets means what your loans and advances uske hisab se so what is the numerator what is the denominator here in this ratio it's the same ratio what is the numerator what is the denominator here capital is the numerator loans and advances is the denominator theek okay? hai they are known as assets because assets hai now Do you think all loans are equally risky or differ in risk terms? Differ. Which is more risky, unsecured or secured? Unsecured. Which is more risky, a loan to a businessman or loan to a salaried person? Businessman. Which is more risky, 
business of uh, some business of share market let's say he he does business of share market compared to business of import export share market samajh mein aa raha hai where i'm going with this so risk is different right so what this is a level deeper again so this can i say isme alag alag risk ke loans hai different risk which has to be provided for more riskier or less riskier riskier kiske liye capital adequacy has to be more riskier or less riskier riskier so what you do is you take a weighted average i hope you know what is a weighted average in statistics we learnt in school weighted average means you assign weights so instead of taking marks average marks of all the tests which you solve let's say you solve 50 tests 50 tests you solved you got different different marks how to remove average add everything divide by 50 that is your average but let's say you started studying only after the 40th test you started revising only after 40th test so you know that 40 to 50 are more important ones so usko you will multiply by higher weights and lower 40 ko you will multiply by lower weights and then take a weighted average this is statistics theek hai so this ratio is called see the english is called as capital to risk weighted assets ratio capital to risk weighted assets ratio oh ho sir very deep sir samjha bhai it is called now imagine you read this in book capital to risk weighted asset ratio sir khatam kuch to hai sir there is something like that each and every word has to be understood in economics then your reading becomes so fluid and so easy see we saw rbi monetary policy we understood lot of it so next time when you read something in newspaper you will be interested to read if you didn't understand it next time you will skip it samjha and then your preparation has a lot of holes in it this is called as car i have written it down car this is called as c r a r capital to risk weighted asset ratio ye samjha kya that is my question what is what does it show it shows the proportion of capital which has to be kept in the bank by the owners depending on the proportion of loans and advances depending on the proportion of assets depending on the proportion of risk weighted assets depending on the risk samjha theek hai so this is one more ratio which has to be kept in the bank so we read three ratios slr crr and car do you agree with this this is dependent on deposits this is dependent on loans and advances do you do you agree with this hai ki nahi now do you notice these two ratios are asset side ratios dependent on liability and this is a ratio liability side ratio dependent on asset samjha na so in all ways we are trying to protect the business in all ways we are trying to protect the bank because banks are the blood of the economy hai na they are the heart and soul of the economy do you agree with this completely yes or no did you get this this is the main crux of banking npa thing theek hai now i am adding one more layer to it sir kitne layer ho gaye i am adding one more layer to it ek minute i'll just ha this is what i wanted now i am adding one more layer to it this capital this capital do you think there will be one type of owner or various types of owners various types of owners theek <laughs> hai so this capital i am not going in deep i am just i just want you to know this that there is a difference theek hai there are three types of capitals iske andar hi there are three types of capital one is called tier 1 capital tier 2 capital tier 3 capital theek hai iske andar there are lot many things which we are not going there right theek hai so whenever we speak about car capital adequacy ratio if i say 20% uska uska bhi break up hai there is a break up of that also ki at least 15% has to be tier 1 5% has to be tier 2 and tier 3 nahi hoga to bhi chalega waisa are you getting it just the concept you want i am trying to show now what is the difference conceptually i'll tell you what is the difference 
टीयर वन कैपिटल इज द मोस्ट परमानेंट कैपिटल टीयर वन इज द कैपिटल ऑफ द ओरिजिनल फाउंडर्स टीयर वन कैपिटल इज ऑफ द ओरिजिनल ओनर्स टीयर टू इज मोर इन द नेचर ऑफ सब्सिडियरी ओनर्स कि हु आर लुकिंग फॉर शॉर्ट टर्म इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड ऑल सो दिस कीप्स ऑन चेंजिंग दिस इज द परमानेंट कैपिटल जस्ट फॉर कंसेप्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू ठीक है नाउ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डू यू नो वी स्पोक अबाउट समथिंग कॉल्ड एज बेसिल बी ए एस सी एल वी हैड स्पोकन समथिंग सम लिटिल थिंग वी हैड स्पोकन अबाउट बेसिल आई टोल्ड यू बेसिल में एक छोटा सा गांव है इन स्विट्जरलैंड वेन वी स्पोक अबाउट जी ट्वेंटी डू यू नो वेन वी स्पोक अबाउट जी ट्वेंटी डू यू नो वेन वी स्पोक अबाउट फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी बोर्ड रिमेंबर फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल इज इंडियन वेर चेयरपर्सन फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर है सब से भी एंड ऑल दे मीट सिमिलरली आई टोल्ड यू एट द वर्ल्ड लेवल ऑल्सो दे मीट वेर सेक्रेटरी इकोनॉमिक अफेयर्स गोज सेक्रेटरी ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आई टोल्ड यू आर बी आई से डेप्यूटी गवर्नर से बी से चेयरमैन एंड गवर्नमेंट से थर्ड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर राइट फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी बोर्ड ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी आई टोल्ड यू दे मीट इन अ विलेज कॉल्ड बेसिल इन स्विट्जरलैंड याद है ठीक है सो वेन एवर यू रीड अबाउट बेसिल बी ए एस सी एल दैट इज अ प्लेस इन स्विट्जरलैंड इट्स नॉट अ विलेज आई एम जस्ट जोकिंग बट लेट्स फॉर आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग लेटर रज्यूम की टी द गाओ एंड almost all of the world's economic decisions are taken there world's economic decisions are taken there theek hai world's economic decisions are taken there samjha whatever policy making happens in the economic sphere whatever happens whatever goes on there uh, you know it happens in basel or in some other place in switzerland geneva or basel dono mein se ek theek hai so so you know and even environmental summits happen there so just imagine the irony multi million dollar jets may people from all governments go there to discuss global warming in a place like switzerland they pollute the entire air they go there and they discuss global warming ki are we should not use ac aap khud ac plane mein itna ud ke aaye ho and then you are discussing this it's very funny theek hai so now वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हु इज द सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ इंडिया आरबीआई हु इज द सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ हु इज द बैंकर्स बैंक इन इंडिया आरबीआई हु इज द बैंकर्स ऑफ हु इज द बैंकर्स ऑफ सेंट्रल बैंक लाइक हु इज द सेंट्रल बैंक बैंकर वर्ल्ड के और सेंट्रल बैंक उनका भी एक बैंक है देर इज अ बैंक which is a which acts as a bank of the central banks over, all over the world that is called as no it's not world bank that is called as look at the word or look at the name BIS that is called as Bank for International Settlement BIS ठीक है this is the central bank of the world so RBI is RBI का bank है ये it is RBI's bank ठीक है RBI is a member of this so point being they have various committees RBI also is, we have monetary policy committee yes or no similarly this bank has a committee called as BCBS I'll write the full form also see this Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. ठीक है, this is a committee. They met in the 1970s and 80s. They met when banks were failing. Why banks were failing? Because owners were just increasing their business. And this is not a problem with respect to India only. This is a problem where you know world level पे ये problem है. This problem faced by all countries. So these people met. So let's say RBI reported this problem to BCBS or BIS. same goes for all other countries so they decided ki let us meet together let us form a committee who will formulate rules and regulations to prevent banks from going bankrupt samjha si bank is going bankrupt isse zyada kya ho sakta hai theek hai so they they introduce some rules they introduce some rules why they are introducing some rules to protect the money of depositors to have a healthy banking system is it is it clear so far these rules are called as
these rules are called as these are known as basel norms so every central bank now bear in mind every central bank contributes to the discussion when these norms were finalized when these norms were finalized this committee said see this committee is comprised of 60 central banks ha huh? 60 central banks all over the world they decide so this committee said ki this is the global standard for banking safety if you want to follow in your country you can If not, make sure कि it is at least as safe as this. कुछ तो follow करो to be safe. Are you getting this? ठीक है. What measures do we know to keep banks safe? Do we know any measures? Do we know any ratios, measures? CRR, SLR, capital adequacy ratio, or CRR? It's the same thing. ठीक है. Basel norms also gave a few things, which banks, which told this committee told central banks कि try to follow this in your country because this is the global standard if you follow this there are chances that your banks would be protected see obviously nobody can predict with 100% certainty but there are chances your banks would be protected if not then at least try to follow something as commensurate as this kuch to karo so it is optional it is not compulsory to follow this theek hai but if you follow then very good in your country now we are going to see ki ye kya hai what is this exactly theek hai always remember this bank is who how many participants are there 60 central banks it is owned by 60 central banks theek okay? hai so then we come to basel norms very important basel norms kya basel norms hai what are the global standards for banking safety see we have we are we have not even done history of banking in india we have not even done anything theoretical i am directly jumping into the issues then then we'll do theoretical in the next lecture so i'll tell you about payment banks small finance banks all of that see Basel one. First time when the rules were introduced, Basel one. They were introduced in 1988. Okay, they were introduced in 1988. Now they focused on they focused on mitigating default risk. What do you mean by default risk? What is default? Default. What do you mean by defaulter? Which means someone who don't someone who doesn't fulfill his obligation. So when you as a bank give loan to someone, if he is not repaying it, he becomes a defaulter. Which means he is defaulting on his loan. Some are defaulting means not paying, not paying. So, 1988 Basel One focused on how to mitigate default risk. Understand? Also called as credit risk. Credit risk. I told you credit rating hota hai of every borrower. Default risk on credit risk. This is not that important. I am just giving you for information purposes. Basel Two came in 2004. New norms, new new norms. They keep on revising these new norms. Basel two came in two thousand four. See this, what I am writing. Not important. ठीक है? We we don't need to know what is Basel two. Basel three is something which we need to know inside out, अंदर बाहर. We need to know Basel three very well. ठीक है? Basel three came out. Uh, I think they came out in the year 2009-10, somewhere around 2009-10. Okay, now pay attention. This is very, very, very important. They came around 2009-10. They have three pillars. Basel three has three pillars. Pillar one, pillar two, pillar three. Okay, pillar one talks about risk. Managing risk. Think from a bank manager's angle. You want to reduce risk in your banking system. Okay. It talks about risk. Risk. What kind of risk does banks face? ये तो है ही. Is bank dependent on the honesty of its employees? is bank dependent B banks employees have to be honest they don't have to do chori theek hai um uh, then is bank dependent on a lot of factors which are market based which move up and down if banks give out floating loans that is a market based indicator when banks invest in shares of any other in entity that is also market based tomorrow if market crashes banks investments might come down yes or no so we have to maintain or we have to minimize मार्केट रिस्क ठीक है मार्केट रिस्क मींस 
मार्केट ऊपर नीचे जाने से वॉट एवर लॉस और इनकम वी आर फेसिंग दैट इज मार्केट रिस्क मार्केट एंड ऑब्वियसली एवरी बिजनेस फेसेज सम काइंड ऑफ ऑपरेशनल रिस्क की इन ऑपरेशन डे टू डे ऑपरेशन कुछ हो गया ठीक है डे टू डे ऑपरेशन में लेट से अर्थ क्वेक हैपेंड और एनी और ऑफिस गॉड फायर चालू हो गया इन द ऑफिस सो देन इट विल कॉज अ मैसेव लॉस टू यू सो कैन आई से ऑपरेशनल रिस्क वन टू थ्री ऑपरेशनल रिस्क मार्केट रिस्क क्रेडिट रिस्क डू यू एग्री विद दिस फेयरली सिंपल ऑपरेशनल रिस्क मार्केट रिस्क एंड क्रेडिट रिस्क ठीक है देन वी कम टू पिलर टू नाउ पिलर टू इज नथिंग बट बैंकिंग सुपरवाइजर्स कि यू नीड टू कीप इफेक्टिव पीपल इन योर बैंक यू नीड टू कीप वेरी एफिशियंट पीपल इन योर बैंक सी वी आर ऑल रिड्यूसिंग द रिस्क टू बैंक so pillar pillar to talks about banking supervisor pillar 3 is what we are concerned with pillar 3 pillar 3 talks about standards of disclosure ki disclosure standard means ki banks have to maintain something banks have to show ki how much is their npa banks have to show how much is their gross npa earlier banks did not show npa at all banks told ki it is our internal matter we will take care of it but this pillar when it came it said ki you have to show to the public show to the government how much is your npa yes or no so then we spoke about pillars of disclosure there are three parts to it oh, sorry two parts to it see this word capital adequacy have we heard this term capital adequacy tar capital adequacy ratio and second what do i mean by this asset quality what do you mean by asset quality npa hai stressed hai standard hai you have to show the asset quality what is the quality of your asset asset means what loan and advances ठीक है दीज आर द थ्री पिलर्स और दीज आर द थ्री बेसल वन बेसल टू बेसल थ्री दिस दिस केम इन टू बीइंग इन 2009, ठीक है वी विल स्टॉप हियर आई थिंक डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड बेसल नॉर्म्स वील स्टार्ट विद बेसल नॉर्म्स अगेन इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ठीक है बिकॉज दिस इज दिस हैज बिकम टू हैवी नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट इन Uh, in the next lecture we'll continue in the next lecture so always uh, just let us just revise this in a in 2 minutes we'll just revise this there are two types of accounts which banks keep theek hai profit and loss and liabilities and assets expenses yahan aata hai incomes will come here assets would come here liabilities would come here what are the main assets of banks loans and advances now we also saw there are various qualities of loans and advances standard assets is very good performing assets sub standard is npa more than how many days 90 days from the due date they are called as non performing assets and somewhere in between they are called as stressed assets because so normally what happens is default ke baad banks don't worry but after 1 month after default they start to worry 90 days to hai 3 months hai na 90 days but after 30 days they start to worry so they classify them as stressed assets theek hai what about this why are they in the asset side because they are also investment they also give money back to the bank can can we call them as slr securities can we call them as cash can we call them as corporate bonds see corporate bonds is not in slr bear in mind slr is only government securities theek hai ye ho gaya why only government why not corporate bonds because corporate bonds ka bharosa nahi hai there is no liquidity government bonds means government is giving guarantee ki i will repay don't worry so that is why what about liabilities deposits are in liabilities fairly obvious why capital is in liabilities because it is the responsibility of the business to pay back the money along with any profit or reducing any losses to the owner yes or no so it is a capital then we come to income and expenses interest on deposits would appear as expense because i have to give interest on advances and interest on investments i am receiving now what is provisioning keeping aside some part of our npa for tomorrow's bad day that is called as provisioning what would happen to profits would profits reduce from provisioning or profits would increase from provisioning profits would reduce from provisioning theek okay? hai 
Now that what effect would that have on capital? It, it will reduce the capital. Okay. When do we do provisioning and all that we don't know. What are the types of NPAs we saw? First of all, it was special mention account. Then it became a doubtful asset one. Then doubtful asset two. Then a loss asset. Okay. There are various. Uske beech mein bhi categories. I am just simplifying it. No need to know the duration. Twelve months, three months. Just know one thing. Ki after three years, it becomes a loss asset or a doubtful asset three. It is also called as DA three, but it mainly it is called as loss asset. Then we also know that um, we also know CRR SLR. It is dependent on this. It is very simple. What about CAR capital adequacy ratio? Jitna your business grows, always bear in mind it is dependent on total loans and advances or not substandard loans and advances. Whatever your total business is growing, keep some percentage aside as capital because we are assuming that utna will become NPA. So if tomorrow twenty percent you are keeping here, you are assuming that twenty percent or less would become NPA. So to to tide over that loss you have money to pay them to the depositors so if that so if 20% of the people don't pay from here you have that extra 20% here to pay to depositors yes or no ultimate objective is to protect depositors tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 capital hai which we don't need to know second loans are of two types secured and unsecured theek hai npa 90 days we know approximate 12% i would change this now we know the latest data so why not write the latest exact figures how much it is 9. 88 percent, ठीक है? But it will go to 11.22 percent. We have seen this gross NPA upon total loans and advances. What is the difference between gross and net NPA? Provisioning. So gross NPA 100, provisioning 15 rupees, net NPA 85 rupees. Simple. Secured loans are called as clean loans. Why? Because they don't have any security. They are clean. Are they are clean loans riskier or less riskier? Sorry, I told secured. Now unsecured loans are called as clean loans. Are they riskier or less riskier? Riskier, more riskier. ठीक है? Write off, you know, writing it off completely. Write down, you know, writing, writing off a part of it is write down. ठीक है? Haircut is the difference between them. And uh, so, if bank says that one lakh rupees I have given loan, that person says that sir, I will be able to pay eighty-two thousand only. So eighteen thousand is the haircut. बराबर? Gross NPA minus provision is net NPA. Why it is called as risk-weighted assets? Because your loans and advances carry different categories of risk, carry different categories of profiles of customers. ठीक है? so investing uh, sorry lending out to a corporate is less risky than lending out to an individual because corporate hey, it is a brand name you can give it okay capital adequacy ratio is the same as capital to risk weighted assets ratio what is the formula for this ha what is the formula for this likha hai kya kai we have not written capital upon simple straight forward this we saw ye not required then we came to how to protect them these are the ways of protecting banking yes or no so there is a bank for international settlement which is the central bank of the banks central bank of central banks there is a committee called bcbs banking committee on uh, basel committee on banking supervision they meet in basel a village called as basel they met 60 banks met and they came up with basel norms now these basel norms are to protect the banking system in any country theek hai are basel norms mandatory no they are optional theek hai but it is the duty of central banks to implement them in the country so rbi has the authority to implement basel norms in the country yes or no has rbi done that or do we follow basel norms or what are the basel norms exactly that we are going to see in the next lecture barabar we have not seen yet but we have seen there are three three sets of basel norms basel 1 1988 Which covers default or credit risk. Basel two two thousand four not important. Basel three is more important. Came in two thousand nine. I am not sure that is I am not written. But two thousand nine ten ke aas pas hai. Eight nine ke aas pas hai. This came after the global economic recession. ठीक है. Banks failed miserably. That is why we said that only this is not important. We have to take care of all these things. So let us go to pillar three first. What is pillar three? Pillar three says you have to. Is this not CAR? Capital adequacy ratio. Pillar three says that adequate capital has to be maintained and it has to be disclosed. And pillar uh, three का second part says that asset quality तो दिखाओ. कितना NP है उसके basis पे you will discuss कि कितना provisioning करना है उसके basis पे you will discuss कि how much to grow, how much not to grow. So this is the most important pillar. Pillar two says that banking supervisors रखो. Employ good people, employ quality people, not ऐसे ही कुछ कोई भी. Because they are responsible for giving out loans. Yes or no? Pillar one talks about risk. What is credit risk? Risk of 
द बॉर ओवर डिफॉल्टिंग नहीं पे किया रिस्क है क्रेडिट रिस्क वॉट अबाउट मार्केट रिस्क मार्केट नॉट वर्किंग इन योर फेवर यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड वन लैक रुपीज इन गोल्ड गोल्ड प्राइज इज फॉल डाउन मार्केट रिस्क ऑपरेशनल रिस्क डे टू डे रिस्क ठीक है डे टू डे रिस्क मार्केट रिस्क ऑपरेशनल रिस्क ठीक है so far we have done this we have again we went to the core and we pulled it out after this it is just aaju baaju ka fancy stuff theek hai after that this is just random stuff which we see on the periphery right so we'll stop here i'll i'll give you 2 seconds to pause just a minute you can pause here now then i will go to the next slide this is the next slide you can pause here then i'll go to the next slide just write these names i would suggest this is also da3 a huh? loss asset is also da3 just pause here this is not important so i'm not pausing here you can pause here and then last you can pause here if you want right so these are this was the core of banking we'll take one more lecture at least to cover banking because there are a lot many concepts but the main concepts which i wanted to teach you were these only do you understand provisioning exactly kya hota hai just keeping aside some part of money so that tomorrow when it turns np or it increases in npa percentage you have some money left ठीक है डू यू डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो वाई डू वी नीड कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो इज टू प्रोटेक्ट द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ डिपॉजिटर्स यस और नो वी नीड कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी फॉर दैट वी नीड एडिक्वेट कैपिटल फॉर दैट ठीक है सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड ऑल ऑफ दीज कंसेप्ट आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दम इन डेप्थ इन डिटेल एंड वाई दे आर रेलिवेंट वी विल कंटिन्यू विद बैंकिंग चैप्टर इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर प्लीज रिवाइज दीज कंसेप्ट दीज आर वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट ठीक है सो विल स्टॉप यूर एंड आई सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर थैंक यू